This is a series of films that tells the history of contemporary fashion photography as seen through the eyes of models. Is there competitiveness between models? Well, I think that's the going to be the everlasting cliche that we all can't stand one another. Right. Um, but, but, but really, um, it goes back to what we were saying earlier, you're kind of almost reliant upon one another if yeah. you're doing a shoot together. And perhaps that comes from, from being a British model. I think when you start to really work and you become recognisable, yeah in your own right, then it's because you have some sort of distinction. It's not a trend led. Yeah. Um, it's a definition of beauty, which is really specific. Um, and the only thing you have in common with, with, with a fellow model are your differences. I think this whole idea of Britain, they really, really celebrate individuality. Because so there's that you can't compare and contrast. There's, there's yeah. nothing in it because we're all so, so different. Yeah. So, where's a good place to start? Let's start here. There's a little series of pictures, all I think from uh, the same yeah. shoot. I'm right in thinking, can you see that? Mr. Mizell. Steve Mizell. Yes. An incredible series of pictures. Yes. Um, which I didn't spot you in as so much as find you in. Yes. I hadn't, because you're almost unrecognizable. You have such a recognizable physique. Yes. And your face is so distinctive. But yet in Stephen's pictures, a very different side view. So I wanted to start with that. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Well, this shoot was um, very heavily improvised. Right. And I love that. I come alive as a model when, when I am able to take on some responsibility. Right. And the feeling of freedom and inspiration that you get from that is just something that I have loved in my career but you can just see how raw it is I'm actually filthy I remember literally Pat McGrath rowing me in mud all really? of us over about <laughs> a three four day period just to kind of it's almost you can sort of feel that charge that essence of death yeah um, so and you're quite right normally I play this sort of otherworldly creatures that yes. have transcended into yes. a space that is is untouchable and un unobtainable and when I see these I think couldn't be any more earthy so tell me how this came about. The, I mean, obviously you, you were booked by Stephen. Did you have yes. you worked with him before? Was the first time you worked with him? No, I'd worked with him um, a good few, many times before. Um, and the pictures were always quite staged right. and, and luminous. And it was about kind of achieving some sort of perfection, really. Yeah. Yeah. So the way that Stephen works is that he he's inspired by a direct visual or, yeah. or a story and the reason I think we work so well together is that I'm very static it's about yeah. finding a pose yeah. and, and I stick to it that's kind of how I narrate I'm a storyteller in that sense yeah. it's not about being broken down and capturing the movement in between it's very much finding that final moment yeah and did he I mean I, I think by the way I think an incredible series of pictures and Stephen's probably one of my favorite photographers um, but uh, what I'm, I'm interested in to find out is how he directs you, how he works with you. Did, well, let's start at the beginning. Did you know what you were getting into turning up to the studio that day? No, you <laughs> never know, which I think is um, a real aid. It's a real yeah. plus. Because you never really know who you're going to be on that day. Right. And um, I respond well to that. It's kind of like the metamorphosis. So yeah. I, I, I need to kind of embody a character, if you will. And then I get really immersed in her, him, yeah. it. Yeah. At living, not living, and um, what's very brave about him, I think, is is that he allows the model free reign to explore, and he stands very quietly as a bystander, and captures. Right. Um, but he's he gave me a helmet, and he, and he said to me, "I want you to come up with some sort of dance interpretation, yeah. um, and this symbolises uh, a, a love that you have lost." So the helmet symbolised somebody wow. that that I'd lost, and he said, "Just keep moving." Yeah. And so he kind of worked around me, and it was a bit of an Isadora Duncan yeah, yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, and God, those days are so important just for self development and confidence yeah. and just liberation. And he gave me that. Well, because that's the reason I got started with this shoot, is mm. because it's atypical from, atypical from a lot of the work you've that's done. That's true. But also because it brings a sort of a form of performance out yes. of you. Yeah. But this says, but tell me a little bit about because you're modelling with other girls here, so it's not just always you. Mm. Is that easy for you? Do you prefer working alone or prefer working with Not others? when they're your mates <laughs> and you're trying to find your inner 
morning, you know, because there's sort of a little wink and a moment and we're all trying to study each other because you yeah. realise that you can't be selfless. It's about yeah. um, creating a frame. If you think of a beautiful painting and something of significance, you're kind of working together in tandem to catch the moment at the same time. So, I mean, right. you end up being all over the place. I mean, half the time you're completely discombobulated. But at the same time, it becomes like a live performance. As you said, there's something genuinely real and theatrical about it. And I always imagine that there's an audience, whether I'm in a studio or I'm on yeah. one way, yeah. because I want the performance to be worthy of, of, of an audience, yeah, of, yeah. of the viewer. Because every little thing I do, I want it to have some sort of significance. Right. Um, and so for this, what, in, your, in that session, were you hearing loud music? Were you hearing, what's, what's, what, tell me a little bit about the actual physicality of being yeah, in that session. Okay, uh, it that's a really good point. So there were no words, there right. was no guidance, there was no script. We, we were just given very, very evocative music. And it became so um, hypnotic over a three day period. Right. We, we, we just never stopped moving and it was incredibly emotional, yeah. actually. And how long were the days? So when do you start, when do you finish? Um, I'd say up to about 20 hours. Really? Over yeah, three days? Absolutely. So the relentlessness of, of, of trying to kind of keep up and perform actually made the end product even more authentic yeah. Yeah. because it was that sense of defeat without taking the power away, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It made it human and, and, and hopefully relatable. And does Stephen give much direction? Are you hearing him a lot? What are you responding to? Is it a brief beforehand or are you actually hearing his voice? For this particular shoot, um, he was very quiet. He was really quiet and um, the music did the talking. Right. And what music was it? It was just incredibly sad, hypnotic music. Yeah. Um, and it's really, if you look at the images, it's kind of conjuring up this idea of battle and mm. torment. Mm. Uh, and and mourning, and and I see that there's a desperation to them. So you're wiping away that mask of, of beauty, that idea of perfection. It's not about how your features lie anymore. Mm. It's about um, the spirit and the essence of the person coming out and actually commanding that role and making it your own. And I love that. And um, how long into your career was this? I would say it was probably about a decade ago. Right, okay, so let me, let's get started. What age did you start modelling? I started modelling when I was 18. So ah. actually I was quite late to the game apparently, quite yeah. late to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was how long after that? So that would have been seven years later. Okay. So I would have been a woman in my mid-twenties then. Right, okay. Mm. And did you feel this shoot changed you at all? Or was it, or put it another way, are there shoots you feel have changed you? I think you learn something from every shoot that you do and mm. there are positives and negatives. Sure. Um, I, I, for example, love uh, freedom of movement. Yeah. Um, although, having said that, I, I'm very much known for being incredibly static, you are, yeah. statuesque. Um, but, but in truth, th there's nothing better for me than, than, than moving around, because as soon as I feel a bit, what's the word? Constrained? Constrained. I lose my confidence. Right. Yeah. So and I'm mean, talking a little bit about how you, you know, you said you're, you're, you're known as a model of sort of being very static, which mm. is true. Mm. Um, and this you found, I guess, a, a refreshing or an interesting departure yeah. from that. Yeah, I forgot what I looked like. I forgot what I was supposed to look like. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a different kind of idea of beauty creeps through, and it's the honesty of the human condition. Yeah. Fragility, power, loss, glory. It's, it's such a potent shoot. If I look at it now, yeah. um, I'm so, so glad that it happened because I don't really see many shoots like this no. anymore. Well, I that's think why we've he's changed so, great. so much. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a compliment to Stephen to say he's almost like the master of copy because I think he identifies with his, his original role. He was an art director, wasn't he? I don't know, it's the truth. I yeah. don't know if he was an art director. An illustrator, illustrator, an art I'd director. And, yeah. I, and I think he has no problem saying how inspired he is by existing imagery. No. And he very much has his own definition of what that means to him and how he wants to kind of 
interpret it. Yeah. No, it's, it's a conversation. I always see um, all what we do as a conversation. Mm. So if I publish a series of photographs of you, mm. then somebody else will see those and yeah. take them further and respond yeah. to them. Yeah. And I very much felt that over the last 35 years or whatever it is, I've been working, it has been an ongoing conversation, a direct conversation with some photographers. Mm. So some you know are bouncing off what you do, yeah. and others you know that you're bouncing off what they do. I remember Paolo Reversi was a great inspiration for me. Yeah. Um, and so you know, certain ones you sort of link up to in that mm. way. Mm -hmm. So I think all the sort of, you know, the way that people people work is a sort of global conversation that's happening all the time so there's always you know responses to what you do absolutely um tell me a little bit again pragmatically on this who is hair and makeup um makeup was pat mcgrath yeah. the lovely pat mcgrath yes. and hair i believe was garen right okay yes and tell me about a little bit about the process of pat mcgrath how long are you in on so on you, you arrive at the shoot at what time in the morning six six, six seven o'clock in the morning um, and, you know, again, this is not about perfecting skin or enhancing what you have. It's almost about breaking it down yeah. to, to show, to, to reveal the story. So we were literally covered in dirt from head to toe. And the authenticity of her work means mm. that we're strobbing under our fingernails and our toes and the feet and everything. And I mean, God, what a sense of liberation just to be absolutely mucky for the day and told <laughs> that you can roll around for three days and you're doing it on purpose, or rather yeah, yeah. there is a purpose to it. Yeah. And um, how long are you in hair and makeup or before you're on, to set, before on set? Um, it depends. You know, you can be halfway done and then you're sort of shuttled on set or you can be in hair and makeup for three, four hours. But I have changed a lot under Pat's direction over the years. She's, really? she's seen me that. in many different guises. Well, first of all, you know, I've been a man, I've been a woman, I've been yeah. a creature, I've been living, I've, I've, I've sort of been reincarnated. I've had my eyebrows plucked out, I've had them put <laughs> back on again. I've had long hair, short hair. Um, she's just somebody that's not afraid to explore somebody's face. Yeah. Um, which is great news for me because neither am I. I, yeah. I I'm, I'm heavily reliant, I think, upon that whole metamorphosis. I, I, I love the idea of when someone paints my face, I kind of catch up with them. And, right. and, and it allows me to become that, that right. person, that character. Are you aware when a great picture is being taken of you? Yes. There's and no me, greater feeling. And tell me about that. Oh, I mean, I don't want to get all hippie on you, but it I mean, good. it's just like, um, it's just an absolute mm -hmm. moment, you know, when everything comes together for less than a second, the lighting, the moment a photographer reacts and yeah. the moment you've just hit that spot and that mark there's nothing quite like it you know and you can do 500 shots yeah and if there's one it was worthy of the torture <laughs> but do you are you sort of do you feel that you're how much in sync are you with a photographer I guess it probably depends from photographer to photographer should we talk about your style of photography because <laughs> I think this is really relevant <laughs> something you don't know yes, a lot okay. a lot of the girls talk about you yeah a lot of the models talk about you not least because you're you, mm. but you you have this tendency to kind of outmodel the model. Excellent. And you do <laughs> this thing, and the, that's almost the only sort of neg I'd have about you is that you you have outposed me in the past, and I really? find myself. I'm amazed. Looking at you, it's like a mirror reflection trying to create the same extremities, and then I'm thinking, <laughs> well, what is he's doing this with a camera, and he's st it's in full mode. And it's just quite unbelievable because you're a flower. You never stop, Nick. Right. You're, you're not I'm, static. I'm, I'm aware and of it now. I wasn't the beginning. Subconsciously, yeah. because you're never static, yeah. you, you vocalise what you want through your body movements. Right. And, and it's like a natural state. Then you know, the whole room starts going. It's quite interesting. <laughs> um, I, I am aware of that now because yes. I live broadcast nearly all my shoots and yeah. I film all my shoots. So I have at times watched my own performance, not for, um, for any other reason, that for editing purposes. Um, but I'm aware of that. And I actually, it's something I find shooting you, and mm. I find shooting mm. uh, the models I work mm. with, an incredible physical thing. Yeah. It's, it's part of what I believe, why I started Show Studio, with, was to show this performance. Yeah. So I think we are all performative artists. Yeah. Which is why I'm That's interested nice in... That's nice to have that point of view. I, I'm, it's, it's also why I'm interested in other photographers and other mm -hmm. image makers, because I want to know mm. where this performance kicks in, who does it, yes. etc. Et Anything else we need to know about this? Set? Well, how did you feel when you saw the pictures? And when did you see the pictures? Did you I rush out by the magazine? Um, gosh, I don't know how truthful to be. I don't think I've ever bought a magazine that I was in, but somehow yeah. I've managed to collect them. Yeah. And as I get older now, I think, thank God, because they're so precious to me now. 
um, I didn't realise what I was involved in at the time, you know, and, and in a way, nor should you, because it would be too overwhelming and yeah. too nerve wracking to become really immersed in it. Yeah. Um, because with this, for example, it's a really rich story, but it's also fairly political. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and Stephen is somebody, I think, that sort of dabbles with politicising yep. his work and yep. he makes his opinion very known. And um, whether you agree or not, it's done with absolute conviction. Yeah. So to, to have a series of imagery like that that actually got published, I think, was just a smooth move by the magazine and by him. So. Yeah. And do you enjoy being in stories that are sort of uh, controversial? And, um, is that something that makes you feel it, it's more worthwhile? Is it something you think, well, actually, it's not how I feel? Do you, do you find yourself sometimes in a, in a position where the photographer has put forward a political point or yes. a social point yes. that you actually don't absolutely. endorse or don't agree with? Yes, absolutely. Um, I have been put in what I feel personally mm -hmm. has been a compromising situation. And on the grounds of not, uh, respectfully, on the grounds of not agreeing with their point, I've declined. Because if I don't believe in what I'm doing and saying, then I can't be representative. Fashion is such a powerful tool. Mm. It's a real visual powerful tool and Im imagery is so potent and strong. Mm. I think no matter who you are and where you're from, if you look at an image, it has a lasting effect on you. Yeah, I had a very long conversation yesterday with a friend of mine, a journalist Joanne Furness. Yes. Um, who was saying to me that she believes that the new religious art mm. is fashion photography in the way that, you know, Sistine Chapel and mm. all that was on, at some point, you know, but it, it, it's a similar thing and it's an incredibly pervasive yeah. art form and an incredibly mm. global art mm -hmm, form mm -hmm. and is the thing that people actually now aspire to. That's right, it's it's the number one communicator yeah. as has it, it, it's basically tr uh, tracing its roots because you know that's how history has been defined, that's how we record what has happened in the world um, uh, and that's why I think paintings and photographs are so very very important and modern as well. Yeah, yeah. so I mean Stephen quite often takes on political um, agendas of his series of yes. photographs. Um, he's not, there aren't that many photographers that do, not, certainly not in the active way that Stephen does. There are a few. Perhaps there are, but maybe the, the, the magazine doesn't go on to yeah. publish the images. Yeah, yeah. I think it comes from his personality, which of course is very strong. Uh, he's a person that has absolute almighty faith in what he does, therefore mm. he wouldn't start a project if he didn't believe yeah. in it. And um, I think his sense of conviction carries that and gives other people the confidence to, to publish yeah. his point of view, which yeah. is really how he speaks, that's, how, that's what he's saying. That's his comfortable dialogue, isn't it? Yeah.